Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you saw any of my last videos, then you probably know that I went on a family vacation and I also traveled to a different state by myself with my baby. From doing all of that, I definitely collected a ton of tips and tricks that really helped me out with flying that I thought I could share with some of you guys. So I have put a list together of a bunch of different tips that I'm going to share with you guys today. So let's get right into the video. My first tip when packing and planning for your trip is to make a list a week or two weeks ahead of time. So you're basically going to make a list of absolutely everything you need and then as the week goes on if you randomly remember different things you need or figure out something that you might need to go pick up from the store before you leave on your trip then you can write it on your list so when it comes time to pack you have absolutely everything you need written on your list and you don't forget anything. My second tip that was really helpful for me was checking a bag. I know this is probably really difficult for a lot of people because it's always so stressful, you know, if your bag's going to make it there, if you're going to lose your bag, or maybe your flight gets delayed, or you have to stay overnight in the airport and you don't have your bag for everything you need. So that was one thing that was really hard for me, checking a bag, but because I flew by myself, it would have been so difficult to have my daughter and my stroller and a bag with me. So what I did is I packed both mine and my daughter's stuff in one big suitcase and just checked the whole bag to the destination I was going and then I packed extra stuff in my diaper bag. Which brings me to tip number three. In my diaper bag I did pack a onesie, a sleeper, and an extra shirt for me just in case we had any accidents Then I had extra clothes and didn't need my suitcase. Tip number four is the whole changing process and the diapers and wipes and everything like that. One thing that I did bring in my diaper bag was a changing mat. I bring this pretty much everywhere in my diaper bag, but it was so helpful, especially when traveling. I was able to pull out the mat and change her so I wasn't changing her on like a dirty, germy, like changing board thing, you know, it was all my stuff. I was able to pack her diapers and wipes in there so it was easily accessible. I could pull out that whole thing and everything was in there. And one really great thing that I brought was some doggy bags. There is a little section in my changing pad that has that and that was honestly so helpful because when you're traveling somewhere else and you don't have like your diaper genie or whatever you put your diapers in at home, you don't really want to throw it in your hotel trash can or the people's house you're staying at. So I brought doggy bags so that it wouldn't stink up the room and that was so helpful. Tip number five, when you're traveling it is always really hard to like nurse or feed her and stuff, especially when you're trying to do things like check into your flight and board your flight. You know, you don't want to sit there and constantly be feeding her. And you want to make sure your baby is sucking on the plane. So what I did was I pumped some bottles and put it in my diaper bag and I put an ice pack in there. And I was able to take that through security. One thing with the ice pack is if your ice pack is not fully frozen, then they will not allow you to take it through security on the plane and they will have to throw it away because then it is considered a liquid. So make sure your ice pack is completely frozen, which that also brings me to my tip number six. Bottles were so great. I always fed my baby a bottle right as we were taking off because the sucking helps their ears. If you've ever noticed when you're on a plane, your ears start to hurt or you need to pop them, babies don't know how to pop their ears. So having them constantly sucking on something kind of takes their mind off the pressure and it will also kind of help pop their ears if needed. If for whatever reason you have to feed your baby before the plane and she's not hungry or she falls asleep, I will never wake up a sleeping baby for sure because it is so hard to get them to sleep sometimes. So try and get them to fall asleep with a binky or if you have toddlers or children then bring suckers and have them suck on a sucker. You know that's fun for them, that's a treat they get to have and it will definitely help their ears. Tip number seven. This was one tip that was so helpful for me, especially if you're traveling alone. When you go through security, you're not allowed to push your baby through a stroller through like the security thing. It all has to be separate. So what I did was I brought a wrap that I basically just wrapped my baby up in. This one here is my absolute favorite wrap. It is waterproof, it's black so it matches everything, and it does have a pocket. This wrap here was called Splash Magic Wraps, and if I can find the link, I will definitely link it down below. But I wrapped my baby up right before I went through security and had the diaper bag in her stroller, and then I was able to easily take out my laptop and the diaper bag and compact my stroller and car seat so that I was able to put it all through security and I was hands-free. Tip number eight, when you board the plane, they always give you an option to board the plane if you have children with you or if you're like elderly. So definitely make sure you get on the plane first so you're able to basically set up camp. You're able to 
put the diaper bag under the seat and get your baby all settled, get the bottle out if you need to. And if you are going on a long flight, you are able to ask for a bassinet and they'll basically just clip it to the front of your seat and you have a little bassinet so you don't always have to be holding your child in the plane. I personally did not ask for one just because it was a short flight, but that is an option that they do provide. I would also try and get an aisle seat so if you need to get up at all and change the baby, you can. Or if you end up nursing your child and you don't really want everyone publicly seeing you, then I would choose a window seat so that you have a little bit more privacy. And my ninth tip that I personally did not do because my baby is only two months old, but you can bring lots of toys or activities or something for your child to do. One tip that I've read that sounds really easy for both mom and baby is just go to the dollar store before you leave on the trip and just load up with tons of little toys that are new for your child and fun and colorful for them to play with so that they're entertained and it's not their same old toys. Another really fun activity that I have seen a lot of moms do is you know, like for Christmas or Halloween or, you know, whatever, they have those little sticky, like, jelly things that you could put on the windows. That is one thing if you have a window seat that your kid could play with and play on the window, and that is just a really fun activity for them to do. And now on to my last tenth tip is bring a birth certificate. When I boarded the plane, I kept asking if they needed to see the birth certificate, and they did not. But when I read online, it said that they do need a birth certificate if you are flying with an infant. So, just to be safe, I would print out an extra copy of your birth certificate so you have that on hand just in case you need it for any reason. And that is basically all my tips that I have for you guys. I really hope at least one of these was helpful, and I do have another tip that's actually not really a tip, it's more of advice and it's just to stay calm. I know traveling can be stressful and chaotic and especially if it's your first time and you don't know how your baby's going to react to a plane but the number one thing you as a mom or dad or just parent in general need to do is be very calm because if you're stressed out then your child will be stressed out and it just doesn't make the whole experience a very smooth easy flowing experience so just remember to stay calm and remember that everything's gonna work out just fine one way or another and remember these tips and keep them in mind for when you travel with your baby, toddler, or child. And maybe share them with your friends if you know someone that is traveling as well. I really hope these tips were helpful and if you want to see another video or another tips video then comment down below. Definitely subscribe for more videos and if you turn on the bell then you'll be notified when I upload another video. And for today's question, it's going to be, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you travel to? My dream destination is Bora Bora. I've always wanted to go there and, like, stay in a bungalow and stuff. And who knows, maybe one day I'll do that. But that is for sure my dream destination. And if you guys have any more questions and they're not answered in the description box, then comment them down below. I'm normally pretty good about answering questions, especially if it's in the first 24 hours of me posting a video. So comment down below if you have any questions. Follow me on all my social media. It's always linked down below. And I guess that's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you all have a great day. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys. <laughs> I don't. Anyway. She just said she did.